What was your first camera? Ooh, first cameras. Well, so when I was, boy, I'm gonna say 16-ish, I dug up my grandfather's old Super 8 camera. And so I started shooting with Super 8, but having no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what any of the settings meant. And I just, it's, it's thinking back on it, it's sort of amazing that some of it was exposed. I mean, I had no idea what, I was just setting it in the middle. And so I did get a few rolls back that were just black. But uh, for the most part, everything came out pretty exposed. And so I shot some short films on Super 8 for a little while. And then, uh, and then I think the, the, my first camera, this would have been the tail end of college, it was a Panasonic DVX100, which was, you know, the first, it was mini DV, which is maybe the worst format in a lot of ways in terms of actual quali image quality, but it shot 24 frames per second. It had, uh, I mean, really, I shot a lot with it. It was a lot of sketch comedy at the time. That would, I was, I've always been very into comedy. Uh, and yeah, that camera felt like a, uh, a step, even though I did, I don't know that I ever got paid for a single job with it. I shot a lot with it, which was great. And then, you know, from there, some years later, the Panasonic HVX 100, I think, the, the HD, basically, digital version of that. Um, I never owned that, but I worked at a company that had one, and they let me use it whenever. So, yeah, I think those were, those were kind of the big camera steps for me. And then with many others in between, a 7D, a 5D, A7S, and eventually an Alexa Mini. Do you still have the mini DV tapes? Uh, no, I, dust unfortunately, you know, it's a bummer. I, uh, about, let's see, this would have been 11 years ago, uh, my house that was renting uh, burned down in one of the LA, at the time, the biggest fire in LA. And I lost all of my oh. films. I lost all my writing, all my art. I used to, you know, draw. And it was, it was, it still, still kind of stings, but you know, truthfully, it was a big um, reset button. I, I, it, it, it has helped me with uh, attachment and having a lack of it. Uh, it was the year after my house burned down. I just kind of lived on the road for a year. I could fit everything I owned in a backpack. And so I slept on couches. I flew out to Hawaii and slept uh, on my buddy's hotel room while we were working on a movie out there. Like it was, my life was uh, a bit of an adventure, which I think was good, I think. It was, it was an interesting life for a time, uh, but the, at the sacrifice of losing, you know, all basically everything I had created up until 30 years old, essentially. Was this the station fire? Yeah, the station yes. fire. Yeah. I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah, it was a, a strange time, strange time. It's, it's funny to think that that's so long ago because it does feel so uh, relevant to my life. Like it really, I, I'm, it's, it's altered some of my way of approaching things and, and purchases feel strange to me still. Furniture and I like owning things still feels a little weird, a little PTSD, I think. You know, I, 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 my life has been good since then. So it's, I just, one of the stepping stones, I guess. Who knows? Aside from it, you losing all these things and, and, and that being the, the horrible, like negative side and, and losing, in a sense, your parts of yourself really mm -hmm. went, went down in that fire. Yeah. Do you think it showed you how temporary things are and, and you looked at things in a new light in, in a positive way that way? Yeah, I would for sure say the silver lining of losing everything is that you, the idea of impermanence becomes a lot easier to grasp. And I for sure, it's the impermanence of everything, life, health, I mean, friendships, you know, you just never, I think I take some of those things less for granted now, perhaps, I hope, I don't know. Uh, and I do wonder, you know, 20 years from now, 
what will the scars of that look like? Will they still be there? Will I, you know, I don't know. I moved into a house a year ago uh, after living in someone else's house for basically 10 years. I had like a wing of a house to myself. And uh, when I moved into my place last year, I owned nothing. I had no bed. I didn't have a chair, a desk. I had nothing. And so 11 years, well, 10 years, I guess, at the time after the fire was the first time that I was like, okay, I got to purchase some things. Uh, and it felt, it still feels odd. I can feel the weight of those things. I liked, I liked the idea that it, you know, any particular morning, not to say I would do this necessarily, but that I could just kind of pack up everything into my car and be on my way and that's everything. It's all I need. So, yeah, I don't know. So it's strange. I think I'm still uh, processing all of it, you know, in terms of its ultimate lessons. No, things do own you. It, it's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a weight for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah.